Now for sunscreen. So sunscreen or SPF stands for sun protection factor. It has two different types. You've got a physical sunblock and a chemical sunblock. So before I was introduced to doTERRA and realized how damaging all these parabens and toxins were in different products of skincare, I would always opt for a chemical sunscreen just because they were easier to apply, you didn't have to put them on as often, and they just really, really gave that good protection to your skin. However, understanding what I understand, what I know now, um, the damage from the chemicals and parabens that are in the sunbox, it is a much safer option to either cover up or stay out of the sun, um, it's particularly at the peak levels of sun, or if you are. If you need to be in the sun or for children, for example, to opt for the physical sunblock. So it is more natural. So the physical sunblocks will work by reflecting the light. Um, things like zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, um, they're your sort of natural uh, physical sunblocks. The chemical sunblocks will actually absorb about 98% of the Pacific wavelength, so that of the UV light, and will then disperse it basically. So this can be a lot of serious hormone disruptors are found in chemical sunblocks. So you're trying to protect yourself from skin damage and skin cancer, but they're now finding in recent studies that the damage from these ingredients in a chemical sunblock and the reaction that it has with your hormones is actually far worse than wearing the sunscreen to try and protect your skin and protect against skin cancer and all the nasty things it can cause. So applying 20 minutes before exposure needs to be done with the chemical um, sunscreens. There's another type as well, you can get sun filters um, which basically only absorb about 85%. So it's a very low SPF. A lot of um, mineral makeups will have sun filters in them, um, usually between a, like an 8 maybe to 10 SPF factor. Um, but they can be good to wear over your physical um, sunblock or your natural sunblock. So performance of sunscreen depends on a couple of different things. The composition and selection of chemicals, the solvent that they're dissolved in, that can lower the SPF, timing of application, your wear and tear while you have it on. So if you're in water, they say to apply, apply a lot more frequently. Um, chemicals from cosmetics can interfere and alter that. So basically my advice is to always opt for a physical sunblock and cover up and stay out of the sun as much as you can um, so a natural sunblocks um, can be coconut oil it has a natural spf of about four to five but it's very high in antioxidants which also help protect from damaging uv rays and keep the skin really hydrated um, the sesame oil is about 30%, olive oil is quite high, raspberry seed oil, probably your highest natural UV um, ingredient would be your carrot seed oil and it's about 35 to 40 SPF. So zinc oxide, shea butter, there's heaps of different natural products that can be natural um, UV protection so it's a really good thing to just find that balance so say if you were going to use your coconut oil and you were going to avoid the really damaging part of the day so you would look at your skin rating and um, the sun rating and say okay the sun the UV now is at 11 definitely wouldn't recommend going at it but if you look at it and say the uv is now at about three i've got coconut oil on my skin i'm going to go out in the sun for 20 minutes or something like that okay so just finding that balance there's a lot of diy sunscreens that you can make 
um, using a lot of these products that I've, a lot of these ingredients I've just mentioned. But if you're like me and you're not really a fan of DIY too often, just because the convenience, you don't want to run out when then you haven't got time to make some and stuff. So I like to just use the natural ones that are available and purchase them. So Mugu offer a really good one. What not offer a really good, they're all like natural, no chemicals, no parabens, or physical sunblocks, just put your zinc oxide and things like that in them. Um, a good one for the face I have found is probably my favorite is this one here by Life Basics. So it's a F SPF of 30 um, and it's non greasy and it's got some nice essential oils in there and doesn't have any nasty ingredients. I actually buy that online and last night I just found on Facebook, it's um, Buy Nourished Life, um, that they have it for half price. So I think it worked out at about $12, $13. That can be used on the face and all over. Um, particularly good even for acne skin types because it doesn't have anything in there that's going to be too oily or greasy on your skin. And I read a lot of the comments and reports on that. Um, of people who had oily or acne skin and were using it and found it really good. Great to use under makeup as well. So if it's easy to apply your makeup once you let it all dry in. So finding that balance is what you're looking at. I hope these videos have given you enough insight into the damaging effects of the UV, but then sort of that balance of finding a natural sunscreen that's suited for your type. Now again, if you're not sure on your Fitzpatrick skin type or um, what sunscreen you should use for your skin type, as in the oiliness and you don't want to clog your pores because sunscreen can be uh, one of the biggest pore cloggers for oily skins or even combination skins by using the wrong sunscreen, you can create so much more congestion. Um, and then for oily skin, you could just really, really make matters worse. So it's a really, um, I guess it's a really diagnosed thing. So again, hit the subscribe button, send me a message if you're not sure, comment below and I will really try and just do that skin analysis for you and just ask a series of questions and just try to find the right um, sunscreen that would be best suited for your skin type. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Um, we've got another day to go tomorrow, so we'll be discussing some body care and diet and water intake and things like that. So speak to you soon.